Hello and welcome to Mandarins. My name is Melody and this is episode 14. You can find me on Instagram as bmandarins, mandarins on Ravelry. Um, I also blog as bmandarins.squarespace.com. We have a Ravelry group, which is Mandarins. Um, yeah, so you can join in. We have a couple of threads uh, talking about different topics. Um, you can share your work in progress, introduce yourself, and yeah, just general uh, chatting threads. So I haven't been able to record the podcast uh, last week because um, I've been with family since I came back from France and yeah, it hasn't been possible to record. Um, so yeah, here I am sitting today. It's a very, very beautiful day and it almost feels like, like summer. So yeah, since I came back, I've been with family um, and I've been working a lot as well. So yeah, it's been quite hard to find a moment to sit and yeah, share what I was doing and um, didn't have time after to edit the video and post it. So I prefer to do it less frequently. Um, but not uh, being stressed about not recording an episode. So yeah, um, I'm gonna start by showing what, what's off my needles, then my works in progress, and then I have some nature, nature notes. Um, I just came back from the woods, um, I spent a lovely, lovely morning uh, in a remote place in in the woods, and I gathered uh, some things there. So I'm gonna show you everything after. So, what's of the needles? This is the Blom pattern. This is, should I say, this is my Blom pattern. <laughs> Um, this is knit out of Skin Homestead Light, which is a 100% uh, Polworth um, wool. Um, if you if you watch the Skin podcast, which I highly recommend, it's extremely interesting. Um, Kristen is always giving a lot of information. Um, about knitting techniques or book recommendations. Um, when she first started um, her her company, the first podcast that she did, she she had some very interesting tutorials of different um, dyeing techniques. So yeah, I've been uh, watching her since the very very beginning and. I think a couple of episodes ago, she introduced her new base, which is the Homestead Light, um, and she sourced uh, she sourcing the yarn from a local farm. And this yarn, I really, I really wanted to knit Blom in this yarn because the way she explained it, it she really made me want to try to try the yarn. Um, the yarn hasn't been processed. It's straight from the farm. It's not. It's not super wash, um, and she just dyes the yarn. So yeah, she explained that the the dye doesn't um, behave the same way uh, whether she uses super wash wool or non super wash wool, and that she gets much more subtle colors. Um, with this yarn and it's something that I really really like. So yeah when I received when I received the this kit it was absolutely huge. I think there was almost six hundred yards of sport weight um, yarn. So yeah a massive skin and when I when I was in France I didn't have my yarn winder my yarn twist, so I had to do it by hand. And it was really funny because 
when you receive yarn, you, for some reason, I always think that I'm going to start knitting straight away, but there's always the process of winding up the yarn uh, into a bowl so then you can knit. So yeah, I was really, really excited when I received the yarn and I was, I was sure that the, the next 10 minutes that would, uh, in the next 10 minutes I would start knitting. <laughs> but yeah, I realized um, soon enough that I had to wind it and yeah, I don't, I don't mind for just, was quite long and I was already ready to knit, so I started, I don't remember if I, um, if I talked about the, this version in my previous podcast, but I started knitting on it when I was in France. I knit in the plane uh, and I finished it, um, I think a week after, after I came back to Latvia and then I had to wait uh, for quite a while before taking photographs because I forgot my pin blockers in France. So I had to order some more. So I had to wait for them to arrive and I had to block the shawl. And I also wanted to take pictures with the blooming lilacs inside, outside. So yeah, it was, I was a bit stressed because I knew what kind of pictures I wanted to take for the um, for the pattern. So yeah, I'm glad we we managed to take the pictures. So here it is. It's very different from the first the first one that I knit, which was in the um, Queens and Company turn in the terracotta colorway. But I love, uh, I love this version too. Um, as I said, it's Paul Worth, so it's wool. Uh, the turn is wool and silk, and the texture, the um, the feeling of the yarn is completely different. This one is more squishy, uh, more woolly, so it's gonna be perfect for like the very beginnings of spring when it we're still in at the end of winter or maybe at the very beginnings of autumn. So yeah, it's semicircular shawl. And I just I just love the drape so so much. Here it is. And you can wear it in many many different ways i wear it like this but when i was taking the pictures um i also wore it this way and i re what i really like about semi uh circular shawls is the way that you can wrap them around around your neck your neck um, the triangular shawls, they have like the pointy um, the pointy shape, so it's, mo it's more like a kerchief, but um, this shape you can you can wear it like a cowl. Yeah, it's more like a cowl. You can, it's um, big enough to wear it on the on the shoulders as well. A bit too warm to wear it at the moment so yeah that's off of the needles I'm gonna keep it for the beginning of autumn uh, because well as I said like now the weather uh, we're almost in summer so there's no way I'm gonna I'm gonna wear a shawl at the moment but I'm really excited to wear it um, later this year So that's for the finished object. Then for what's on my needles. Um, yeah, I'm keeping both of my work in progress in my um, bento bag. I really, really love this bag. 
So, the first work in progress. It's all tangled. There you go. So, here it is. That's how much I've been knitting. And this is the quill pattern by Jared Flood from Brooklyn Tree. Okay, pattern right here. Here it is. I just I just fell in love with the with the photograph with the way. Um, with the way the shawl goes with the beautiful floral tunic. This is exactly how I want to wear it. I just, I just adore, I just adore it. So yeah, I'm working on this one in the, in the evenings and the day before yesterday I was in the theater and I was knitting as well. Um, I must confess that I dropped a couple of stitches while watching the movie. We went to we went to see Mad Max, <laughs> which is not the kind of movie that I usually like watching, but that was actually really entertaining. Maybe too much uh, knitting was quite challenging at some moments. Um, it was in 3D as well, so I was wearing 3D glasses. That was quite challenging. I must confess. But um, on the most quiet scenes, I was able to remove the uh, 3D uh, glasses and try to correct my mistakes in the dark. So yeah, this is going very well. Um, at the moment, there's nothing, nothing complicated. It's just um, simple garter stitch. Um, and I started knitting on this. I'm gonna try to knit at the same time. <laughs> um, yeah, I started knitting on it with my um, Knit Pro Metal. Uh, but for some reason, one of them bended, and that's when I. Um, I don't know what happened when I was in the plane or something happened when I came back uh, from France and I realized that one of them was bended and the other pair that I had, I mentioned this before, the other pair that I had has been broken by someone. Um, so yeah, I just had one pair left of four millimeter US6 uh, needles and that's the pair that's the size that I use the most, so I needed to have uh, to have a second pair. And because I'm working on different projects using using the this size, I always had to uh, interchange inter interchange um, the needles or remove the uh, cable holders from the second work in progress. So that was. That was not practical, I was losing time and yeah when you have to you have to unscrew the the needles sometimes I, I'm just I just want to um, to knit on the on my project. So what I did uh, I think it was at the beginning of last week I went to love knitting love knitting dot com I think it's um a UK, a UK uh, days um, yarn shop, online yarn shop, um, and I went. I went to their website. I think a month ago, and I wanted to order a pair of um, Need Pro Carbons because I really wanted to try them, and they were out of stock in this size. So I waited until they were back in stock and I placed an order 
and they arrived they arrived I think during the week but I was away so I just got them in the mail today so here they are and I just uh, yeah I just changed the metal needles uh, that were that I was that I was uh, using on on the quill on the quill shawl um, and now I'm um, I'm using the carbons and yeah they're they're quite nice uh, the tips are the same as the metals but the carbon part is uh, holding the stitches so the the stitches are not that slippery on the needles but it's not something that really bothers me I I'm quite a fast knitter I think <laughs> um, yeah and if I'm not in the cinema watching um, an action movie I don't usually drop my stitches so it doesn't I really like using metals um, much more than wooden uh, needles but as I said I really wanted to try the um, the carbons so yeah I think that I'm going I also want to try the Chiagu and the Haya Haya so yeah that, I think that's what I'm gonna try so what else can I say about the quill we started a knit along on Instagram with uh, a couple of knitters uh, we are using the hashtag quill KL uh, to share our work in progress so if you want to join in uh, there's two versions for for this pattern there's the small one that requires something like a thousand yards and the big one the big one um, yeah 2150 uh, yards so it's more than twice the size so yeah if you want to join uh, just come on Instagram and you can start uh, knitting whenever you want we don't have any deadlines or we just um, knitting together and having fun knitting so the second work in progress I haven't knit on this on this one so much because I have some other things that are almost off the needles but I cannot share anything uh, yet so that's something that took me well I knit quite quite a bit on it uh, it's almost it's almost done I just have a couple of things uh, to do uh, but it's what kept me busy uh, this these past few days uh, very very busy and there was no way I could work on something else while um, I had to have this finished so I worked a little bit on this in France and a little bit uh, on it last week The yarn that I'm using is Book of You, You, um, my friend Liesl. Uh, her yarn is, it's some yarn that she sent me, that she dyed uh, last autumn with black walnuts and it's um, baby, baby alpaca, yeah. And I just love, 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 love the color. I cannot wait for the autumn to come when I see this color. And as I said in my in the previous episode, I just I just love uh, the way this knits up.
So these are the two work in progress that I'm working on plus the third one that I can cannot talk about yet. So I have three works in progress on the needles and that's my absolute limit. <laughs> I've also been quite busy doing other things that I will share very soon as well. Um, I wanted to show you the pin blockers that I bought. New Pro, the T pins that I highly recommend for lace when you need uh, lace patterns and you want to block, block it, block the lace. These are very, very useful. So yeah, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, um, I was in the woods this morning. I was in the woods. Um, we went to the countryside house because we wanted to see um, if we could get some mushrooms. But it's way too early in the season. There's no mushrooms yet, but there's a lot of snakes around. So yeah, we've been really, really careful. Um, yeah, we didn't know that um, we would we could find a lot of snakes. They we've heard recently that there's one poisonous snake here. So yeah, we've been really, really careful. I'm not particularly scared of snakes but I don't know how I will react if I would walk in right next to me I would see a snake so yeah I was really really careful <laughs> so we didn't find any mushroom but we found we found like lovely lovely other things we made some fresh bouquets with flowers, uh, made, of, made of flowers. I think this is lupine. Very, very beautiful. Then we found <laughs> these beauties. People used to make pillows out of them before. They are quite similar to cotton and I think they are called I've tried to gather more more of them not that I wanted to make not that I wanted to make pillows or anything but yeah I just wanted to make even more bouquets for home and I think it's called cotton grass. I'm not, I'm not sure. I have to double check. It's my friend Fran on Instagram that um, that said it is cotton grass. So yeah, I don't know. That's the first time that I see um, this plant. Then we got these flowers. They smell a lot. They smell like French, French. They smell like fresh laundry. Yeah. They smell like rosemary and fresh laundry. And these are really, really good to repeal the moth. And yeah, we are... In my parents' house, we don't have... I haven't seen moth. I've never seen moth flying around or anything. We never had issues, but here it's quite a common thing. Maybe because we are surrounded by um, by woods, by pine trees, and a lot of forests, so maybe that's related. But we have quite a lot of moth, and because my flat is full of yarn, uh, full of I don't have a lot of clothes, but they're all made out of natural fabric, cotton, linen, uh, wool, of course. So I'm very, very careful and, and very scared at the same time that something uh, would arrive. I had um, one 
one dress, one handmade dress, one handmade linen dress, and there is quite a big hole inside because of the moth. So yeah, I'm not very stoked about it. So I'm gonna try to maybe make sachet with this. We also gathered some pine pine shoots because we are planning to dry them and make tea, herbal tea with them because they can um, treat anything that is related to the lungs so if you have some kind of lung infection or a bad cough you can uh, drink this tea so we gathered quite a lot of um, pine shoots and they're drying in another room at the moment but there's also, we could also make syrup with it, uh, which is something that is sold commercially quite a lot. So I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I have a couple of herbal medicinal books. Uh, the, I have, I don't know if I'm showing. Medicinal Herbs by um, Mary Rosemary Gladster and I don't know if she has anything with the pine shoes in the book but I have um, her biggest book as well so I'm gonna make some research and see if she has anything um, about it in it. So yeah. For stash enhancements, I don't have, I have received things, but I cannot show you anything at the moment. And my parents, uh, they're back from the US. They, they were in the US last week. They went to um, the pioneer states. So they were in, they went to Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and they went to the Yellowstone Park and <laughs> so they were in a bus with a guide, an American guy that, uh, that spoke French and my mom asked um, if the guy knew a place where she could find yarn, she could buy uh, local yarn and the guy, the guy looked at her like, what? like yarn I don't know I have no idea because my mom told me that she could uh, she sold a lot of sheep so she presumed that she could find yarn and she stopped in I think it was a souvenir shop or something and she told me that she she grabbed me two skins of alpaca decay and yeah I'm really really thrilled uh, about them she was really cute she told me if you want to I can ship them to you so you can have them very very soon and I told her I told her that I will wait uh, for the next time they will come and visit and then I will bring them with me <laughs> so yeah nothing nothing to show you this week um, tomorrow uh, today and tomorrow there's the biggest craft fair in Latvia and every year, the, the National Craft Fair is in the Ethnographic Museum. So I'm planning to go there tomorrow, spend the day there, have a picnic, hopefully, because the weather is really, really nice. And yeah, I don't know if I will upload the podcast today or tomorrow, um, but if I don't upload it today, I'm planning to take my camera with me and maybe um, show you some footage of the ethnographic museum so yeah that's what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow so yeah I wish you a beautiful end of your weekend and I talk to you next week or the week after